good day to all of you because all of you are joining from different time zones i think of people like iec talia are joining like a six o'clock in the morning to all the way to people in philippines and other countries which is almost like a you know 10 o'clock at night so thank you all for joining i am andal balu uh, from kokota now i'm going to hand over the mic to uh, teresa Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone wherever you are in the world. Welcome. We're glad to have you with us. I'm going to do just a brief bit of housekeeping and then I'm going to ask Aisi a question or two just so we can get to know her before, before we begin. Just want to let everybody know that we are recording today's session and you will receive a link at a later date to view uh, the recording. Also, if you have questions, if you'll put them in the chat, which you will find the chat button at the bottom of your screen, if you'll put your questions in the chat and at the end of the presentation, we will uh, open up the dialogue uh, with the questions we can ask IEC. Uh, so with that, I'm going to just turn my attention to IEC and just ask her to share with us a little bit about herself and where her COCO journey started. Thank you. Good morning, all. Thank you so much for being there um, today with us. And to respond to your question, I will say the passion comes from, you know, the family farm. Uh, growing up around cacao farms, uh, I always, I've always been involved with entrepreneurship and cocoa farming. So it actually came naturally to me to start with my venture. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that. Well, with that, I will turn the presentation over to you. Awesome. Great. So, good morning again. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Aisi, and I am the founder and CEO of MGAL Food, a startup cocoa beans processing company and single source origin chocolate ingredient supplier. Today, the topic of the of the presentation will be cocoa farming in Cameroon from farm to chocolate. And to give you a little bit more of background um, and go more into uh, uh, details about the whys and the how, um, like I said to Teresa earlier, I grew up around uh, cacao farms in Cameroon and I come from a third generation of cacao farmers. So, um, Farming cocoa beans in the farm, uh, it, it was done for a very long time. And uh, it was always, we, we I, I was growing, I was playing with those cocoa pods. And I remember my, my grandmother saying that she doesn't want me to be involved with uh, cocoa farming because she was always saying, uh, you know, you don't make money when you grow uh, cacao beans. And, you know, it stayed with me at a very young age. So uh, when I grew up, you know, I, I was doing so many other things than thinking about taking, helping the, the, the family farm. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's really, it, it's because it, it comes with a lot of challenges. So uh, I, now that I am in the, in the industry, I understand where she came from. So the next presentation, uh, the next slide is a little bit more background of um, Cameroon. So Cameroon is located in the Central Africa. And um, I, in this Cameroon has five climatic zones. So the part in white are the zones where um, there is no production of cacao beans. So the, um, uh, the zone one is the, it's really an arid and uh, it's close to the Sahara, Sahara desert. So it's very dry. So no um, cocoa beans can grow there. The zone second, the second zone is semi-arid savanna. Um, there is also no um, cacao beans production there. And the zone three as well, which is close to um, the Western Highlands. 
with a high attitude. Um, so no, no production is happening there. So when we go down to the zone four and zone five, uh, we have those two rainforests on the zone four, um, which is about 4,000, um, 4,000 um, uh, of rainfall per year, which is pretty good. Um, so this is just one rainforest. And when we go to the zone five, we have uh, two rainforests and we are located in the zone five where we have two rainforests, uh, which is about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 um, of rainfall per year. This helps us to actually uh, grow the cacao beans and, uh, and have this very rich flavor. The next slide, it's a little bit to talk about the ecosystem, the cocoa trees, um, the cocoa trees and the trees, they grow in the equatorial forest. They originated from the Amazon and uh, very quickly adapted to the same ecosystem in the equatorial forest of the Congo, Basin covering Southern Cameroon, uh, Central Africa Republic, um, and also uh, the Gabon uh, and Equatorial Guinea. So let's talk a little bit about the history of cacao or cocoa in Cameroon. Um, so the cocoa, Theobroma uh, cacao, um, came in Cameroon between um, the 86 and 87 during the, the colonization of the German. Um, so Cameroon is, was a German, um, was under the German um, uh, governor Julius von Soden. He used to be um, the main uh, person in charge of Cameroon back in the days. We are first a German colony and it was 65 years ago after introducing to Sao Tome and, and Principe. Um, cocoa beans was introduced first in Sao Tome, then in Ghana, then in Gabon, and then in Cameroon by this governor, Julius von der Sen. So it was mostly imposed to grow the cocoa beans. It wasn't really something that the, the local population were doing. Um, so it was really uh, imposed by uh, this governor. And like I said, Cameroon was a German colony and then a French colony. So it was pretty much, uh, he was in Cameroon between uh, 1846 and 1921. And in that time, he was uh, really focusing on growing more cocoa beans in uh, the, the zone, the, 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 the five zone where our village is located. Mifua Famba, it's really the center region of Cameroon. This is a really great picture of my village, of the farmers in my village. We work with them, we know them. And as you can see, um, cocoa growers gain very little for their hard work. It has been going along since generation and um, we're talking about a $2 per day um, among a population of 2.1 billion. And this is a 6% of the price of chocolate paid by consumers in rich countries. We, we say rich countries, the, uh, the Western countries. Um, so actually this is the whys as well. And it, it, it brings me back to what my, my great grand, my grandmother was saying, I don't want you to be involved with growing cocoa beans because I don't want you to gain $2 per day because it is hard work and it doesn't pay. Um, and you know, my dad used to say, cocoa farmers, they grow what they don't consume and what they consume, they don't grow it which is, this is why it's not working. So here you have a picture of a family who have been helping the family farm uh, since I was very young. And this is their house. And I'm very uh, grateful that they were able to share a picture 
of them and their house. This uh, is a picture of our family farm. Um, so Cameroon in Cameroon, uh, growing cocoa, uh, cocoa beans and in my village specifically, um, it's, we're talking about an important source of income and where um, cocoa farmers don't benefit enough for their income uh, from their hard work to meet the needs and maintain uh, their living standard. And um, of course, they are left suffer. Um, they, they, they're just suffering from this uh, cycle um, and is a, an important source of income. I remember uh, growing up around, um, growing up, I've seen every time the harvest season started, we, we have seen all those cocoa farmers getting ready to uh, harvest the cocoa beans, uh, do the fermentation. And then we have all those um, buyers coming and pushing the, the, the small cocoa farmers to just sell their products. And uh, they have to sell it because they don't know if they will have a chance again to meet buyers. And um, it, it, was pretty, uh, it was pretty difficult uh, to see how things are done, how after harvesting, you have to press, put so much pressure on yourself to sell um, the cocoa beans. So I did this slide to uh, give you a little bit of, a little bit of overview about um, the, big, the biggest chocolate companies in Cameroon. We pretty much have seven big companies in Cameroon that um, processes the raw cocoa beans into chocolate bars and chocolate paste and cocoa powder. This is in Cameroon, we consume pretty much a lot of cocoa uh, paste, uh, a kind of thing that uh, it, it's a little bit similar uh, as Nutella. We people prefer that as uh, that chocolate bars. Um, I actually grew up eating uh, a chocolate bar the name is uh, Shokokam. Shokokam is pretty much a, a huge company. Uh, this company, uh, you will find they, they, they serve um, the Central Africa and they pretty much specialize in making chocolate bars. It's very sweet. Um, it's um, a mix of milk and uh, a little small amount of cocoa beans. Um, nuts, um, the flavors are not very diverse, but uh, I think we used to love it because of the sweet and we thought that was actually chocolate. So uh, we enjoyed that. So this is pretty much the biggest company, I will say in Cameroon, followed by um, Patams and followed by uh, Gamma Agriculture and Tico and uh, other different um, big companies that do powder, as I said, uh, people like to drink, um, to drink chocolate. So uh, cocoa powder has a lot of uh, uh, consumers that enjoy drinking it, especially the kids. And um, what really makes Cameroon beans special, um, it's because of the variety in Cameroon, we in especially uh, especially in our family farm, we grow uh, the Trinitario, and as you may know, Trinitario beans is a hybrid between uh, the Forestro and the Criollo, and the Trinitario uh, is darker, is more reddish. It's uh, definitely preferred uh, by a lot of uh, uh, European uh, processing industries. Um, because of its higher cocoa butter content. And of course, uh, you can use uh, uh, the cocoa powder in so many, many uh, different companies. Uh, I just see uh, the companies that are buying from us right now. We see ice cream shops getting excited by our cocoa powder because yes, the color, the flavors are so rich and uh, bakeries as well. Uh, so it's really ideal for baking and uh, the baking and the dairy industry. And like I said, they really appreciate the, the, the color. Um, and 
we are very lucky that the Trinitario grows in our family farm and that they can actually continue growing uh, that variety. In this slide, you have my dad. My dad is uh, in charge of the family farm right now. He is the one that really wanted to bring, uh, to put an accent on conservation and uh, put in place the smart agricultural practices. He has a PhD in agronomy and really uh, making sure that our cacao beans or cocoa beans reach the standards for in, uh, international exports. Because like I said earlier, um, some of the small cocoa uh, beans farmers, yes, they know how to harvest the cocoa beans, but also they, there is a lack of training in terms of uh, conservation and small agricultural practices. There is still a lot of work that has to be um, uh, done at the farm level gates. There is still um, a lot of support that they need. And um, we are very grateful because uh, my dad and his team uh, in Cameroon, they really can support the smallholders cocoa farmers. So mulching the trees, this is something that has to be done. Regular weeding, pruning the trees, uh, pruning the trees, he's pruning the trees right now. Um, the shade controls reduce the damage by uh, pests and diseases. So these are things that you really need to make sure that you do every harvest, every on, on your, your cocoa farm. And you know, when the harvest season finish, finishes, we really take the time to go to talk to the cocoa farmers and explain that if they need some tools, if they need something, they can always come to us and we will help them to set all those good uh, conservation practices. And as we grow, we want to be able to offer those services to other um, cocoa farms around our village as well. So, Good chocolate obviously starts with good agricultural practices. These are very important. If the harvest, as you may know, if the harvest is not done properly at the farm level gate, you have the chances that your chocolate will be um, a, medio a mediocre uh, flavor or higher. So this is why we put a priority on making sure that good natural mulch are done, good yields are done, that we offer top quality cocoa beans. It's very important. The next slide is really, I put again uh, an accent on the requirements. So I did three requirements. I put, I kind of organized it in three requirements. So the requirements at the farm level gates, the first one is really to have a clean farm, healthy trees, and top quality pods. And as you can see in the picture, these are top quality pods. You can see there is, they are yellow. They are, um, there's no uh, dark spots on the pods. So this is what we call top quality pods. The, requirements, the requirement number two is harvesting at the right time. The harvest in Cameroon goes through September to December. So we want to make sure that we are ready to harvest. And as you can see in the picture, from the tree, it goes. We need to cut the pods a certain way. And then after cutting, we put all the good pods together. The requirement number three is sorting after harvesting. So we make sure that we keep only the good parts to be harvested. In this next slide, I really love this slide because it shows the family once again. On the first picture, you have my auntie. She's sun drying the beans. On the, and, um, on this, uh, the picture number two, you have my sister. She's in charge of once the, bean, once the beans are in sacks, she's in, sort, she's in charge of sorting and counting the sacks and making sure that 
um, you know, what we harvested are actually in the bags and she's really in charge of managing the workflow and the inventory uh, at the farm level gate. We put the sacks, we have a little uh, warehouse in Cameroon. So the sacks are uh, on pallets and we count. We're making sure that um, we understand the inventory cycle, that we know how much we harvested. Um, it helps us to kind of predict um, what had, had um, how many people worked uh, and it helped us for the next harvest. And this slide, those drying systems, we use local materials to uh, build those drying systems. Those drying systems were built by my dad once again and um, the farmers. Um, we did all of that in our farm with local materials. And as we grow, we actually want to be better systems and cover those, um, those uh, systems because when the rain comes, it will help us to kind of make sure that the cocoa beans are protected. This slide is really to show that these are the condition of the roads in Cameroon. It's very difficult to have access to uh, the villages. So really, it's great to harvest cocoa beans. It's great to uh, produce cocoa beans, but we also need to be part of the challenges that the local populations are facing. We need to be part of their struggles. And one thing we are doing, and you can see my mom on the third picture, you can see her really working with the local population to understand how is that we can help building roads by again using local materials. Um, so here, when the rain comes, it becomes moldy and we can spend two hours just to do 10 kilometers because it's so difficult to cross um, from the town to the village. And normally uh, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers, you, you, you do it in the Western country, you do it in 30 minutes or 25 minutes, but in the village, you to, to go from Yaoundé city to the village, you can sometimes spend three hours, four hours just to go through the village, which is very difficult. So definitely facilitating access to the farm. This is a priority. This is something that we have to support because eventually investors of customers or the world will want to see where the cocoa beans are coming from. So this is something we are thinking and this is something we are helping the best way we can with the, the mean we have, of course. And the family farm. So the project and cow um, started because first of all, I wanted to support the family farm. I wanted to support the local, uh, the, the cocoa farmers in, in, in my uh, region area. I wanted to make sure that I open new trading opportunities for them. And opening new, tr uh, new trading opportunities for them was starting a business that will help them to bring their cocoa beans to the international market to make sure they meet the international standards and to have their beans selling abroad. And this is what I'm trying to do, what I'm doing actually. Um, so the beans, they are growing. I'm making sure that I handle, I help them to export, to understand what we require, what is required when exporting and what grade one means, you know, because sometimes they're gonna produce very low quality beans that score that don't, don't meet the international standards. So they really need to understand that and they need to understand what is the commodity price and how they should charge for uh, what, what price they should, they should charge for their, their cocoa beans. And again, understanding um, all what it takes to just export the cocoa beans 
and, and what's the value chain is because if they are not making enough profit out of their work, it's maybe because at a very low level, they don't understand the industry, right? So it's, we put really an accent to explaining the whys and the hows. So again, on this picture, we have the, 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 the nice uh, drying system that that was built on the at the farm level gate and the second picture was actually my very first trade show um here in bc so i was really into um explaining why we should support the small cocoa farmers and how difficult it is to harvest the the, the, the cocoa beans and what it takes um and really explaining that chocolate doesn't grow on a tree and it doesn't grow uh, here in BC. So it was, a, it was very educa educational. It was very about uh, sharing the story behind and where it is coming from and that Africa produces a lot of cocoa beans um, uh, supplies, actually uh, the word in cocoa beans and uh, that in uh, Cameroon or uh, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, um, the quality uh, meet the international standards. Um, so it, it was, I really liked that first trade show because I, I was able to uh, share the story because like I said, I came from a third generation of cocoa farmers. So uh, I have this direct link. I've seen how difficult I've seen the pain I've seen and I, I was always wondering, why is that we don't have technology at the farm level gate? Why is that we still using those, those, those materials to harvest cocoa pods? Are there better ways we can open the pods, cocoa pods? Are there better ways, we, faster ways? So when you, you, you start thinking about helping the cocoa farmers to um, in their daily work production, you you you, you got to think about okay now how can I add value to their work, and this is what I'm doing adding value to their work. The beans they grow, I process them into different chocolate ingredients, and ideally, I put uh, the the third picture is a very important picture because. My goal is actually to help people who want to export from Cameroon to the international markets. Bringing a, a container is difficult. And sometimes if you don't have connections in some countries, you can have your containers stolen. You can have your container, um, you know, sometimes the beans might be less than what you ordered. So at least having that connection with us, we can also offer to share a containers or to give you the contacts of good shipping companies, which is very important, uh, those contacts to have. Jumping to the next slide, that was actually my first two containers that I brought in 2018 um, in, um, in our factory in Mission BC. Um, it was, it took approximately four months. Uh, and like I said, it was our very first container. We had to deal with a lot of um, middlemen uh, back in Cameroon. We needed to know exactly who, who is in charge of what and uh, where our beans are. Uh, and I'm very grateful that I have this direct connection, which is the family. So they were actually able to go uh, and to see uh, the beans on daily basis, to see what's happening, to see that, okay, when we have to put the, the, the because when the beans leave the, the, the family farm, they are not packaged in the, um, uh, the, the, the proper bags. So the shipping companies have to pack them again in uh, the, 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 the bags that will meet the, the, the international shipping. So we had to make sure that at the very, at every stages, we knew that the beans were 
handle with good cares, where handle the way we want it. You need to put contracts. We need to make sure that the, 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 the people, whatever you export the cocoa beans, the people take a good care of your inventory, that what is stipulated in the contracts is actually what they are doing. And again, you can go with terms, you can uh, make sure that, okay, when the beans are in the container, then this is what I'm gonna be paying. And when the beans are in the boat, this is what I'm gonna be paying. So it was a very long process. It took us uh, over three months and I'm happy that it went very well. Now the connections have been made and these are people that we can trust. Um, and you need to have somebody there. Otherwise, it's going to be challenging. It's not impossible, but it's going to be challenging. It's going to take you a lot of resources and it's going to you know, take you time. And time is an enemy, especially when you have at the end of the supply chain, people waiting for your inventory at a certain time. It can be challenging to wait four months for your inventory. And also, something that we are working on and that we're going to launch very soon is a tracking system. That tracking device will be put in the container and that will help us to monitor the inventory from the farm to your facility. That is something that I really put a priority on because sometimes the, the cocoa beans that you ordered is a grade one with a certain humidity, humidity six or seven. And sometimes it can arrive with a humidity of eight or nine, which is not okay. So having that tracking device will actually help our future customers or existing customers to know that, okay, when the beans left Cameroon, this was the humidity and different other, um, different other, uh, things that we want to be able to track during those shipments, um, we want to offer that to our customers because it's very important to track those, um, uh, to track those. Uh, so the tracking device will be able to, um, we're going to send it to the customer and the customer uh, will review, will make sure that uh, it meets uh, their needs and then, um, for our customer who wants uh, containers, we're gonna put the, the tracking device system in the container, and then they will be able to uh, track the inventory. So this is me um, uh, on the second picture. This is me helping to uh, unload the container. I was, uh, I was very happy. It was a great day because like I said, four months and, a lot of calls back home, a lot of calls with the shipping companies back and forth about the whys. And uh, I, I was very happy that I was able to uh, make sure that the beans are delivered um, in my facility here on time and to some of my customers. So again, uh, the next slide, uh, the title is Supporting Entrepreneurship in Vancouver. What it means is that through this venture, I was really able to gather a lot of talents to build this for very first factory. Um, this is the very first factory in the West Coast that processes from the raw beans to chocolate ingredients. I was able to put so many people to help me to build this factory from um, a local plumber, a local um, electrician, and, 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 and you know, it's not just about building a good factory, it's also what comes to build the factory. We need to make sure we have the right equipment. So I'm very grateful that I met Coco Town because they provided with a very good winnowing machine that was able to give us the best quality cocoa nibs that you could find on the market. And speaking of cocoa nibs, I have brought some samples here. So this is what we do. We, from the raw cocoa beans, 
we turn them into cocoa nibs, cocoa liquor. So this is the cocoa liquor. Cocoa husk. So the amazing winnower we purchased from Cocoa Town give us those amazing cocoa husk. I personally drink it as tea because it's just so perfect. It tastes it tastes cocoa. You, you can feel the, the richness of the cocoa beans. The husk have a perfect size and it's just enjoyable to, to drink it, to drink it as tea. Uh, I actually have some right now <laughs> and I was drinking uh, in the morning. And then cocoa butter, cocoa butter um, that I, I also use on my skin, uh, on my son's skin when he has eczema. And soon we're gonna launch a cooking one that actually you can cook with it. Uh, you can fry your eggs with it because um, we used to have a joke um, uh, saying that cocoa farmers don't eat chocolate. But what I wanna put the priority on is that they don't consume chocolate because it's already difficult to harvest uh, the cocoa beans. To purchase the little equipment to make the chocolate bars will be too intense on them and uh, usually grown up people don't consume sweet. It's mostly for the kids, but what we do consume, what smallholders farmers do consume and as medication is cocoa butter. Cocoa butter in the farm, this is such um, a super product. It's it's such a, it's, it's a medication. We don't just, use it uh, like you know uh, every other type of cocoa oil this is this is something that can be used as medication and this is this is what cocoa farmers use because you can use it use it as i said like on your skin on your hair on to consume so this is what cocoa farmers like to consume and this is this is why I'm actually going to do so many other products with it because I feel like cocoa butter is not used as much as it should be, and um, I'm very I'm very grateful that Coco Town was able to uh, offer us those premium uh, equipments because to make premium quality products you also need to have very good uh, machineries. So in those pictures. That was at the very beginning. I was test, te uh, uh, testing my uh, cocoa powder machine to make uh, the, the hot cocoa. Um, so I was grinding the cake, uh, and it was uh, yeah. I was able to to to, to kind of really taste uh, to, to see the chocolate. People say chocolate powder, but um, I was able to to. to to really validate the premium quality of our product and train people about um, what is that we need to do to making sure that our the people who will purchase from us receive premium quality ingredients. So this is what we do. We offer from the beans to the chocolate ingredients, a single source product. If you purchase our chocolate chips, you're gonna receive the cocoa butter that are coming from our beans, the Trinitaro, you're gonna receive the cocoa liquor that also comes from the raw cocoa beans. And this gives, this will just give to your chocolate such a, a premium quality because it is harvest the way it is supposed to by respecting the international standards validated by all the chocolate makers we served. And I'm very, very grateful to, um, you know, receive all those positive reviews on the work we are doing, supporting entrepreneurship. Because we also support small businesses like us. We purchase from Coco Town uh, equipment. We purchase um, the, the, the containers from uh, local uh, manufacturers. We support the best way we can. My dad, actually, it's him who says, all he always says hard work is the key word. 
you know, sometimes when you work on a project, you don't us usually realize the amount of work you're doing to make things happening. Um, but it does take a long time. Uh, I've been working on Mtao Foods for now four years. We're going to turn four years this year, next month, actually, on August 10th. And it did take a lot of time. The first years, um, I was into more thinking about how I can what should I do, right? Because I have all those inventory in Cameroon. Um, so the family farm can produce up to 200 metric tons of raw cocoa beans. So the question was in the first time, can I just import export? Can I just uh, be that person that will connect the customer to the small cocoa uh, holder farmers? Can I just be that middle person? And then I realized the market I am in right now, they don't, um, there's no market for the raw cocoa beans in BC. Um, they prefer to have it processed. So then I went into, uh, okay, who can help me to process the raw material into the chocolate ingredients? Then during my market research, I realized that nobody is actually processing in the West Coast. This is why I undertake um, the work of starting this processing company. Um, and then I realized that, oh, I can, instead of just making the roasting, I can actually, uh, making the, the nibs, I can actually, uh, making the cocoa liquor, I can actually have the cocoa butter, I can actually make the hot, the hot cocoa powder. And finally, I can make the chocolate chips because People actually love the chocolate chips because it melts easily. It's um, even um, if you bake at home, you can use it. So there's so many different uses for the chocolate chips, right? So during that uh, discovery phase, I just end up realizing that if I'm able to raise enough money to make the chips, then I can actually offer all those five other products along what I'm gonna be producing. So this is why I started to build the very first manufacturing companies from beans to chocolate ingredient in the West Coast. And again, like I said, it is so diverse. I'm even surprised to see how much people and how diverse the clientele is. You can find the names. So I'm partnering with wineries, breweries, I was amazed because to me, I just thought that, okay, chocolate is used for cho uh, in chocolate bars, um, you know, in uh, cereals, uh, those common products that we know. But uh, as I'm working in the, in the project, I'm realizing that no, you can actually have chocolate flavors in so many different products. And it's just to show you how we value chocolate, how the, 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 Cocoa beans, it's such a super, it's, it's, it's such a super food and that we should use it as much as we could. And that's um, what I'm trying to do with this venture. So this picture again shows uh, an amazing picture of the winner uh, purchase at Coco Town. I really recommend it. Um, and to give you even a little story about uh, the winner. Um, I first purchased, my first winner was purchased um, to a different manufacturer. And I had so much time because, so much hard time because I couldn't have uh, the best husk quality that I have right now. I had so much nibs in my husk and I was actually losing uh, some nibs because the machine wasn't winnowing properly. Um, uh, I, I, I was losing, uh, I, at the end of the day, let's say a batch of 100 kilos at the, with my first winnower, I was having only 20 kilos good nibs out of that first new winnower. This is why I'm very happy because I was part of the FCIA and they told me about Coco Town and this is what, how I, I, I was able to get that amazing machine. So it's very important to have the best equipment, to have the best products. Because the market is used to have premium 
chocolate ingredients already. So when you come in the market, you need to make sure that uh, you can, you have good products. And the difference, the difference with our product is that, you know, I, I, I am in a small niche. I value the single source. I value the vegan. We are vegan product, a vegan facility, and we are organic. The beans are organic certified. So this is our small niche. And what we do, we do natural cocoa powder. We do uh, non-deodorized cocoa powder. And again, always we want to put a priority to the natural flavor. We want to make sure that when you use our product, you have that chocolatey flavor, you have that natural flavor, and we want to let you the chance to work with uh, rich and flavored uh, chocolate ingredients. And this is why so much people love it. I even have a customer saying, oh, wow, I never taste, um, I didn't know cocoa powder tasted like that because I'm used to different flavors, alkalizing, which is also good. But you know, when you actually taste something natural, you can taste a different by the color as well. Perfect. So here is the end of the presentation. If you want to get in contact with us, you can go to our website, www.mkofoods.com, or send us an email to info at mkofoods. If you want to reach me directly, you can send uh, an email to IEC. My name is AYISSI uh, at mkofoods.com. And uh, yeah, we'll be happy to uh, send you all the information needed. Uh, if you need to know more a little bit about our work, our impact in Cameroon, please uh, send me an email. Um, am I, um, I was a little bit fast in the presentation, but mostly um, the company MKL Foods, which is, is just uh, an abbreviation to say, enterprise made for cacao, cacao with the K. Uh, it's really supporting, opening new trading opportunities for small cocoa farmers. And it doesn't, the, the goal is yes, Cameroon, but eventually other countries in Africa because it's a global issue. All cocoa, small cocoa farmers are having the same issues. We're starting in the center region in Cameroon, but eventually the goal is to grow in, with more financing support uh, with more even financing uh, support at uh, you know the processing company um, you know it's uh, it's the goal to grow this venture and to support more cocoa farmers in creating more impact bringing more awareness you know sharing the margins with the cocoa farmers because sustainable um, sustainable cocoa farming, the, the, if the, the, the supply chain is not more sustainable, then I'm not sure how we can have a sustainable chocolate industry. You know, we need to put the farmers first. And I'm happy that so many companies are doing that. And so many customers, consumers are also only purchasing from companies who are giving back to the small cocoa farmers. So thank you again for giving us a platform to share the story uh, and uh, to just you know let people know about the work we're doing here and that we need we need people to share share like our posts like our uh, Instagram Facebook please just uh, let people know about what is that we do thank you so much for giving us a platform thank you Aisy that was wonderful you know like we have a saying in our language one you know uh, people can go to the city and earn money but mm -hmm. then at the end of the day you still need the farmer to yeah. you know, bring the food for you unless the farmer puts the put his uh, feet mm -hmm. on the mud you don't have the food on your table so yes. you need to make sure that farming is sustainable like you said you know, very, very small fraction of the money goes to the farmers. Mm -hmm. The people who are feeding us, they are going hungry at the end of the day. So yes. that's one of the things that Coco Town is very passionate about to make sure that they get the benefit. And that's why we are bringing the awareness of the farmer struggles. So when people, um, you know, even if they're not making chocolate, but if they are supporting the, in the craft chocolate, 
they pay that eight dollars or something they know at least that is helping some of the farmers not go hungry because when they like you said they come to the farmers land uh, and then they try to get the you know the lowest price possible from the farmers so the middleman can make the price yes you know whereas uh, the most of the cart chocolate makers they work with the farmers directly and mm. to make sure the farmers are taken care of that's why we love the craft chocolate industry. Most of them are trying to uplift the farmers. Mm -hmm. So I think your presentation also brings more awareness to people around the world, the struggles of farmers, and then how we can you know, empower the farmers. I know we understand, but at the same time, people like you are taking actions to support them. So mm -hmm. thank you for that action. Sure. Sure. So now there are some questions. And um, we want to see if people, they, you know, if we open the mic, Teresa, they can ask the questions themselves. 